Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. A problem was posted to Reddit They Did The Math, which is causing a lot of confusion. Richard drives from his home to work at an average speed of 50 miles per hour. Later, he drives from his work to his home at a speed of 60 miles per hour. What is his average speed over the two trips? The person who posted the problem had given an answer of 55 miles per hour, but the correct answer was said to be 54.5 miles per hour. The person wondered, is this really the correct answer? In short, yes, that is the correct answer. Many people had confusion and they were actually taking the simple average of the two speeds. So you might think you could take the average speed just by taking one half of 50 plus 60 and getting to a speed of 55 miles per hour. But this is definitely wrong. When you average speeds, you have to take into account the time that you take with each speed. So let's go deeper into this calculation. Let's set up a diagram where Richard is driving from home to work. Suppose the distance between home and work is equal to a distance d. Richard is driving from his home to work at an average speed of 50 miles per hour. We know that distance is equal to speed times time. Solving for time gives the equation that time is equal to distance over speed. Solving this equation for speed, we get that speed is equal to distance over time. So Richard can drive to work at 50 miles per hour, and let's calculate how long it takes him. The distance is equal to d, and the speed is equal to 50 miles per hour. So the time will be equal to d divided by 50. Now Richard returns home. So he turns around and he drives at an average speed of 60 miles per hour. So how long will this return trip take him? It is the same distance d, but now the speed is equal to 60. And notice something. We know the average speed will take into account the time traveled for going to work and returning home. The time that he takes to go to work will be longer because d over 50 is greater than d over 60. So you're spending a longer time at a slower speed, which is going to drag down the average speed for the entire trip. Let's calculate the exact amount. So we know that speed is equal to distance over time. So what's the total distance for the entire round trip? We know that we travel a distance of d to work and a distance of d back. So the total amount will be equal to 2d. What's the total time that's taken? It will be equal to the sum of the two times. This will be equal to d over 50 plus d over 60. All that remains is to simplify this expression. Let's factor a d from the numerator and the denominator, so these variables will cancel. It remains to simplify this fraction. There's a nice trick to eliminate the fractions that are in the denominator. We have 1 over 50 and 1 over 60, so we can multiply the numerator and denominator by 50 times 60. Why does this help? Notice that 1 over 50 times 50 times 60 will be equal to 60, and 1 over 60 times 50 times 60 will be equal to 50. So the denominator will become 60 plus 50, and the numerator is 2 times 50 times 60. This simplifies to be 6,000 divided by 110, which is equal to 600 over 11, or approximately 54.5 miles per hour. And that's the average speed for the entire trip. It is slightly less than 55 miles per hour because you're spending more time at the slower speed. It is a very common calculation to average speeds, so let's go ahead and generalize our calculation to a general formula. Let's go back to this step where we have 2 divided by 1 over 50 plus 1 over 60. We had speeds of 50 and 60 miles per hour, but what happens if we had general speeds? So let's remove 50 by a variable a and remove 60 by a variable b. We then get the average speed as equal to 2 divided by 1 over a plus 1 over b. This formula is also known as the harmonic mean of a and b. 
and it gives a way to average the numbers a and b when you consider them as speeds over equal distances. I want to conclude the video with the riddle that I've shared a few times before, but it's absolutely wonderful. In 1934, the psychologist Max Wertheimer sent a letter to none other than Albert Einstein that contained a delightful brain teaser. You have a car that's going to go up and down a hill. The ascent of the hill is one mile, and the car is averaging a speed of 15 miles per hour. The car then will go downhill for a one mile descent. And the question is, if you want the car to average 30 miles per hour for the entire two mile trip, what speed does the car need to go on the descent so you can reach an average of 30 miles per hour? This is harder than it seems at first. So with the lessons that we just had in the previous problem, let's apply the formula. So if we have two speeds A and B, we can calculate the average speed as two divided by one over A plus one over B. So in this problem, we want the average speed for the entire trip to be equal to 30. We know one speed A is equal to 15, and we are trying to solve for the other speed B. So we need to solve for this. So we have the equation, 30 is equal to two divided by one over 15 plus one over B. What value of B do we need? Let's focus on this equation. So let's multiply the numerator and denominator by 15b to clear the fractions in the denominator. This simplifies to be 30b divided by b plus 15. Multiply both sides of the equation by b plus 15. Distribute the 30. Now we have 30b plus 450 is equal to 30b. Subtracting 30b from both sides of the equation, we get 450 is equal to zero. Wait a minute, we've reached a contradiction. Something is wrong here, we can't solve for B. So what's going on? Let's take a step back and simplify this first formula. We know this is equal to 30B divided by B plus 15. What would happen if we take the limit as B goes to infinity, that will exactly be equal to 30. So we're going to need the speed to be larger and larger until it reaches an infinite amount, and that's the only way we can average 30 miles per hour for the entire trip. We can understand this graphically. Here's a graph of two divided by one over 15 plus one over x, and we see that it has an asymptote exactly where y is equal to 30. In other words, we need to have increasingly larger and larger speeds but we will never get exactly to 30 miles per hour for the entire trip. Let's try to understand the problem in another way. If we need a 30 mile per hour average for the entire trip, how much time do we need to spend for the entire trip? Well, we know we have a two mile distance and we want an average of 30 miles per hour. So we know we must spend one over 15 hours for the entire trip. How much time does it take us to go just on the ascent? Going at 15 miles per hour for one mile will take exactly one over 15 hours. So we've used up all the time on the ascent and there's no time left over for the descent. Albert Einstein himself wrote, not until calculating did I notice that there is no time left for the way down. So the concept of averaging speeds was paradoxical even to the great Albert Einstein. So even if us regular folks are confused from time to time, that is perfectly okay. Averaging speeds is a confusing and interesting concept. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.